About 2,000 years ago, God clothed himself with humanity. The king of kings who upholds the galaxies with his hands now was held as a helpless baby in the arms of Joseph and Mary. But fast forward about 30 years, mankind who its own hands had made were now taking the Roman nails, piercing it through the hands and the feet of its creator. And there Jesus hung on the cross and he died. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about what do those events have to do with you. Hello and welcome to The Christian Life. When I was younger, I remember hearing how Jesus had died to save me. Though it sounded nice, I later realized I never really understood what it really meant. Why would Jesus need to die? And because of sin, people would then say. And the Bible tells us quite plainly that sin leads to death. But I wanted to understand why. Because if you don't understand why sin leads to death, it's very hard to understand what Jesus actually did. So when I started studying this, what I found, the reason why sin leads to death, is actually quite logical. Let's go to the Garden of Eden. God has done this incredible job creating the world. He made Adam and Eve as the first human beings. But then there's this one tree, and he tells Adam and Eve this about the tree. Genesis 2 verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. How many of you, if you were able to give God some advice in creation week, would have been like, God, you know, great job. World, wow, looks amazing. But, um, you know, this one tree, I'm, I'm not so sure about it. You know, we, we don't want Adam and Eve to die, so, you know, maybe let's just skip that one. You know, it's safer that way. Why was it that God made this tree? If you think about it, God had made Adam and Eve without that they had given their consent. God didn't have their permission or approval to, to make them alive. And God has this beautiful, incredible plan for them, this destiny that we talk about in another video. But they had the choice. God gave them a free will to embrace God as their creator and to embrace this destiny or to reject God and to choose their own way. And this tree was supposed to be this symbol of where their loyalty was. But why then, if you choose to reject God, why then does that lead to death? Before I give an illustration, let's have a look at some Bible verses. Adam and Eve, they chose to go their own way. They rejected what God had said, which is called sin. And they ate from the tree. Now watch what happens immediately after. Genesis 3, verse 8 to 10. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam hid from God. He was so ashamed, so afraid to stand in the presence of such a perfect and holy God that he rather hid. And that is what sin does. Sin is so, so against God's nature that as soon as we engage in it, we step out of harmony with who God is, what he is like. Because we have sinned, we naturally want to hide from him. And we see that in today's world where people hide behind all kinds of bushes and trees, you know, science or alternative religions and much more, all because we just hate that feeling of being accountable to God when we know that we have been doing wrong and that we are doing wrong, that we love doing wrong. And then to think, to stand in front of a perfect and holy God, that's just too much. We rather hide. And here is what that means. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. 
Sin turns our hearts from everything from him, even life itself. It's not so that God is just waiting to punish the sinner, but it's more that we choose it ourselves. Time for an illustration. Imagine that this is you. As you face the source of light, you can receive the light. But what happens if you decide to turn around from that source of light? What do you face? Well, darkness, because the only source of light is behind you. So it is with God. God is the only source of life, of goodness, of hope, of love, of health, of peace. It can go on and on. And as you face the source of it, you can receive it. But if we decide to turn from that source, then what do we face? We face the absence of all of those things behind us. We face death, sickness, suffering, despair, hate, worry, envy, shame, guilt. Now let me ask you a question. Even though you turned around, did the light stop shining? No. And here is what is so fascinating. Even though you turn around, the light is still surrounding you. God is still trying to reach you. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Even though we have decided to turn around, to exclude God, to reject him. You know, as Adam and Eve, they heard that God was walking in the garden and they chose to hide. But still, God wants us to turn around back to him and live. Talk about what a patience, what a forgiveness. But that is not all, friends, because the opportunity for you to be able to turn around and live, it came with a price. Okay, this is important. Remember then, you, just like Adam and Eve, were made with a free will. God doesn't force you to be in a relationship with him. God didn't force Adam and Eve to be in a relationship with them. He doesn't force you to face the light. But the thing is, if you take that free will, that freedom, and exercise it against God, so to go your own way, to turn your own way, even though that means to turn from the source of life itself, it means that God still needs to honor that choice. God can't just forget about your sins or pretending it never happened because that would still not be honoring the free will that you exercised back then. Eliminating one of the two choices leaves you with only one choice, and that is, in other words, force. You don't have a free will after all. So because we have chosen to reject life and to choose therefore death, God needs to honor that, and that is why death is inescapable. And I'm not just talking about the death after about 80 years, the Bible refers to that actually as a sleep. But I'm talking about what the Bible says is the second death, a complete separation from God. But how does this go together? Because we have all sinned. We have all chosen death. That is why death is inescapable. God needs to honor that choice. So it seems like a hopeless situation. How is it then still that God is calling us to turn back to him and receive eternal life? And that's where Jesus comes in. God in the flesh. God saw the paradox. He saw the impossibility for us to be able to turn back and still live. He saw it's not possible, but he wanted you. He loves you. So what did he do? He took your place. God himself came down to earth as a man and he experienced the consequences of your sin in your place. The Bible says that he tasted death for all men the complete separation from God, so you don't have to. A radical act of love. He thought you are worth dying for. And just like God came to Adam and Eve in the garden looking for them, he is looking for you. That cross is an invitation for you to respond. You are his created being, and you have a special place in his heart. He loves you so much, and it doesn't matter what you have done in life, how messed up you are, 
It doesn't matter how unworthy you feel to accept such a gift. He loves you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be in relationship with you again. It's your choice. You can choose to reject this second chance, to reject this offer and face the consequences of your sin yourself. Or you accept him to take your place. And you turn from your own ways and you turn back to God and his ways to be saved from sin and receive eternal life. We want to thank you for watching this video and we really pray that you will want to step into a relationship with God, to turn to Him and discover how much your Creator loves you. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we put out a new video every week. You can find us on social media, on our website thechristianlife.com and we'll see you next week.